road, move on to the next hole. When all the holes are dug, don't go any further without the landscape fabric. Cut openings for the holes, and you're ready to set the posts. Now make sure your posts are long enough to reach the proper height once they're set in the ground. Now, if you're doing a large deck with a lot of posts, you might consider having the concrete delivered pre-mixed. But for this smaller job, we'll mix ours in a wheelbarrow following the manufacturer's directions. Scoop the concrete into the hole to code level. Then use a board to work the concrete, eliminating air pockets. Check that the concrete is level. When the concrete is set, place the post on the footing. Check that it's plumb with a post level. Use the layout strings to keep the posts in line. You can attach temporary braces if needed. Then fill the hole with gravel. Once the rest of the posts are set, cover the landscape fabric with gravel. Then let the concrete set for a few days to ensure that the footings are solid and strong. There are several ways to do this. Now, our code requires us to use carriage bolts through the beams and posts, same width as your post, and attach with nails or screws. Now, we've already cut our beams to length. Now, they might have a slight arc called the crown. You want to make sure the crown is always up. Now we'll place them on the cleats. Use a clamp if you need to. Then drill the bolt holes. Insert the bolts and tighten. Now cut the post to length. So with the foundation set, we're ready to start. We'll start by marking the rim joists, which will help support the floor joists. Now, our building code requires the floor joists to be spaced at 16 inches on center. So starting at the end, roll out your tape measure and mark every 16 inches. Once you have all the marks, extend the lines down the face of the plank with a speed square. Place an X to the right of this line, indicating that the joist will sit to the right. Then mark the other rim joist by transferring the marks from the first one. Pallet holes at the ends of the rim. You'll need to drill near the ends to avoid splitting. Resting on the beams, hold the rim joist against an end floor joist and attach them with screws through the pilot holes. Do the same thing on the other end. Attach reinforcing brackets with nails. Position the frame in its final location, making sure that everything is square. Then attach hurricane ties, which are brackets that hold the frame in place. The frame is locked on this beam so we can install the rest of the joists. Joist hangers will help support the planks. Just hold the joist on the mark. Drive a screw in the top to hold it even with the rim. Position the hanger tight against one side and tap in the speed prong. Then squeeze the hanger against the other side and tap in the other prong. Now drive the nails. Finish installing the joists and hangers for this side. Place the other rim joist on top of the floor joists near the beams. Line up the joist with the marks, then secure the ties in place. Add ties across every row of beams. With the frame secured to the beams, attach the other rim joist just as you did the first. Drive nails into the end of the joists. Now that the frame is finished, the decking is next. Starting near the yard and working toward the house, place the straightest decking plank you have flush with the rim joist. Drill two holes about one inch from the edge of the planks through the rim joists. Then drive screws, two in every joist, along the entire plank. Position the next plank against the first, using nails to set the space for drainage. Continue securing the rest of the deck checking for square every few planks. Now, when you get to the last 10 boards, you can adjust the spacing to make the last plank fit, or you can keep the spacing uniform and rip the last plank to fit. Just place the cut edge closest to the house. With the decking secured, snap a line on the planks over the end joists and cut off the excess decking. Well, things are looking pretty good on this deck. Now, the next step is to install the stairs. It's on the framing square at the height of the rise and the length of the run. Hold the square at the corner of the plank and mark the top step. Slide the square along the plank and mark the next step. Continue marking until you have your number of steps. At the top step, hold the square under the mark like so and strike a perpendicular line. This is where the stairs attach to the deck. At the bottom step, 
hold a piece of your tread where the stairs will rest on the ground. Mark this line, which will shift the entire set of stairs down by the thickness of the tread. Now when you attach the top tread to the stairs, it should be flush with the decking. Now cut the stringer. Then use this cut stringer as a template to mark the other planks, and cut those too. Okay, now we can start assembling the stairs. Following your building code, mark on the joist where the steps will attach to the deck. Now our stairs will be 48 inches wide and supported at the deck with brackets and at the bottom step with posts. Secure the stringers to the deck flush with the top of the joist. Conceal the brackets by attaching them to the inside of the steps. Cut all of the toe kicks and treads at once to save time. Attach all the toe kicks with screws. And if you're attaching the steps to the posts, like we are, use carriage bolts just as you did with the beams. Then attach the treads, leaving a drainage space similar to the decking. So the steps are in place, and there's just a few more things on the joists. Start by cutting the posts to length. Then cut notches at the bottom. You'll need to remove the width of the floor joist plus the decking thickness at a depth of one and a half inches. Also, notch the top for the two by four. Use a circular saw and finish the cut with a hand saw. Next, clamp the posts in place. Make sure they're plumb. Drill two holes and attach the posts with carriage bolts. For extra support along the end joists, attach bracing adjacent to the posts with screws. So with all of our posts in place, we can install the 2x4s at the top. Attach them with screws. Use a miter saw to cut corner joints and joints on the stair rail. Then attach the balusters. Now you can't buy them pre-cut or even cut them yourself. They need to be flush with the 2x4 rail and extend to about the middle of the joist. Evenly space the balusters at the top and bottom and keep them plumb. You can use a spacer to ensure equal distance between balusters. Now attach the top rail with screws. Five-quarter decking makes a great top rail because it has a smoother surface than regular lumber. 